podcast. All of that at the Rockets Chop Shop. So hit the like button, subscribe if you're new. Um, looking at these Rockets uh, box scores, we'll start with the man of the hour. Actually, I got, I was going to give the game ball to Alperin Shangun, man, but he blew two layups in the crunch time. Uncharacteristically of him uh, to do that. So I'm going to have to give it to the man of the hour, Jabari Smith Jr. Jabari dropped a smooth 24, had uh, 10 rebounds, so 24 and 10, three assists. One block, one turnover, shot 37 from three. Not great, but decent. 58 from the field, 10 of 17 on that. Only went to the free throw line one time, hit that. So that was 100%. Jabari was guarding Luka as the point of attack defender, which, I mean, how many guys do y'all know that you could watch him play against Giannis as the point of attack defender in one game and then Luka in another game? I mean, that's special. Like, you know what I mean? That's, that's, there's not a lot of players in the NBA that ha- have that physical profile to be able to do that and the, the, the athletic abilities. A lot of people say Jabari's not an athlete. That's to me, that's just like a very casual view of athleticism, right? Like, people think being an athlete means you could dunk. You know what I mean? People think, yeah, you could dunk. You got a, you know, 50 inch vertical. They'll call them an athlete. To me, athletic, you know, athleticism obviously is bigger than that. Obviously, lateral movement, change of direction, hip flexibility, the ability to control your body. Basically, that's what an athlete is. Can you make your body do what you want it to do? And Jabari at, at 6'11 is guarding guards. He's guarding bigs. He's getting stronger in real time, able to guard Luka on some possessions. Now, you know, you got to take a team. Luka did drop a smooth 50. But I think when Jabari was the point of attack, he really bothered him. And, you know, they would have to screen him off multiple times to get him off of him for him to pick on a weaker defender. Uh, but, you know, Jabari did his thing, bro. Then the shot selection was beautiful, getting into his, his midi bag, driving down into the paint, obviously hitting his threes, a couple of them. Um, you know, when he's in transition, he's a weapon because he's liable to – and the NBA knows – you guys will notice when Jabari starts getting into transition um, – they're, the teams are pointing him out like you got to pick him up full court because he'll walk right into a three. And now he's getting smart enough to walk into the, that little free throw area to hit a shot. So, um, you know, that's that's definitely a big improvement for him um, as a player. I'm really, really excited about him. And we'll talk about him a little bit later uh, in the stream. So let me get to some of these chats and we'll keep going. Of course, we do that. Uh, so we got. Got JNRZ saying, hey, Frank. Frank was good, bro. Was good with you. And if you guys do any like uh, super chats or anything, I don't have that stream that tells me real time. So I'll just get to it when I get to it. So my bad. Um, yeah, so we good there. What up, Sigma Migs? I see you, brother. Was good with y'all. Uh, Chet man telling I'm good. Loud and clear. Bet, 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 bet. Uh, let me see. Let me get to some. Your boy, uh, uh, Joe Blue says, this was a fun game to watch. It was. You know, I, that's all we we really want from the guys is just to compete. You know, we just want them to compete. And I really value um, these type of games. I value when the, when the team is playing in, in close games because these experiences are, are what they really they really need to develop. You know, they might not be able to win um, a lot of these games because they're playing against goats on the other end. But these experiences are valuable nonetheless because that's what, Let's me know that, uh, you know, that they're they're really, really developing. Because they're able to take little steps. You know, and, and one thing I'll give the Rockets this season is that they are uh, resilient. You know what I mean? Regardless of what the situation is, they're resilient. Um, they really try to, uh, um, they always fight back. Last year, that team would have quit. And I would say that the character of some of the guys they brought in and the development of the players that we had in-house, is, uh, is, is really, really showing them. Is my internet low? I've just seen Joe Blue say my internet is low. Y'all tell me, is my, is my thing is, uh, lagging? I've been having that issue. Uh, let me see. If I'm lagging, y'all let me know on, in the chat. Is it lagging? Sometimes Restream does that. Y'all let me know in the chat. Is it lagging? Is it lagging? Oh, my mic audio is trash. Oh, okay. I got you, brother. Two mics. I'm gonna switch out to the other one. Y'all give me a second. Let me swap it out. 
You pull out the old school. Switch it out. All right, test, test, test. What it sound like? What it sound like? What y'all y'all let me know in the chat. What am I sounding like? Am I am I back on? Is it back on? We good? All right, bet. Appreciate that. All right. So what I was saying was my bad, man. My bad. I I, I got two mics. One of them is uh is from uh guangdong china the other one is 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 a better quality one so i was using my chinese mic so anyways but uh yeah man so i was saying that uh the team is real resilient this year uh you know they're playing uh you know they're playing with heart you know i mean they come back from a lot of these games that they are not supposed to be you know really in and you know last year we would have quit but we got a resilient bunch of kids this year um they're doing what they're supposed to be doing um, you know, and I, I really like some of the development steps that they're taking um, as a team. Now, I still think they need a lot. You know, they need a lot with this team. Um, you know, they still need a second unit. They need a floor general. And we'll get on that in a minute. So let me go through some of these chats. Maybe somebody will bring it up. JNRZ says, can't do much about it. Yeah, that was you You facing one of those guys. That guy you see down there at the bottom right of your screen is one of those guys. And whenever I see a close game and I see one of those guys on the other team, you just hope you just pray for the best, man. You pray for the best and you feel me then, you know what I mean? You just, just hope when it happened. What we got here, Jabari showing his potential. Yeah, man. I think Jabari is really coming, coming along. Well, um, I think that, uh, the confidence is really, really something amazing. Y'all heard me say this, you know, this take, and I just said it in a group chat earlier today. Honestly, I think there's there we there's a conversation to be had about him being the highest potential prospect on the roster. I mean, you can't teach six eleven that that could guard one through five. You can't teach that. You can't teach a guy that's going to be probably a 39, 40 percent three point shooter in his career. You can't teach a guy that's going to be six eleven in the paint shooting a probably a fadeaway or turnaround jumper that's unblockable. There's just some things you can't teach. You feel me? There's some things you can't teach and. And and when you have that two way ability, it's unfair, man. When you're a, a a player that you can you have a shot that's unguardable because of your height and release point, and you are able to defend at an elite level. That's that's such a rare skill set that a guy that can guard Giannis and Luca, and not look stupid doing it. That's crazy. So yeah, Jabari's potential is is really really unmatched. Uh, what we got, Alex Mid says, very good game through the third quarter. was run, ran through by Al P a lot, which led to the comeback on a very close game. Man, that is on point. So they were running the offense through the post because the uh, Dallas's defense was not allowing the guards to really get off um, on their three-point shooting. So they were either forcing the drive or um, able to kind of show bodies on them. They're, you know, hard, setting hard, hard um, hedges on screens. So they are not they weren't really playing a drop defense in this game, which is what Jalen and Kevin Porter like to feast on. You know, when they got them bigs that like to play that drop coverage, um, they come come down off the screen from LP, they get into their bags. But Dallas was really playing up on those screens and forcing our guys to either get downhill and make a play or or, or take a tough, tough, tough jumper. So and when they would set those hedges, a lot of times those bigs will come up. And they'd get stuck on one of our guards, and Shangun would then have a mismatch in the post. And uh, you know, the guys finally started making those passes, recognizing him in the post. And to me, that's our base offense. That should be our base offense. Run it through the post and just create chaos off of there with Jalen, Kevin Porter. You see, he got a lot of catch and shoot opportunities today. KPJ did. He didn't capitalize on them, but he did. Uh, but yeah, man, they that should be our base offense. What we got, uh, let's see, Sleep Art 11 says it was a good game, more movement through the game. Third quarter was nice. Yeah, man, it was generated, man, uh, by going through the post. Um, as much as people, a lot of y'all, some of y'all don't like Shangun. Some of y'all don't like Shangun, uh, but 
he we really need him. Like the team literally really like we'd rely on him to set the offense because he forces us to have an identity. Otherwise, it'd be whatever Jalen and Kevin Porter were feeling that game. Jalen plays good, we go good. Jalen plays bad, everything looks like trash. So I don't like that because that's what Luca happens. That's what Luca. Hold on, I got the YouTube feed on. Let me go ahead and look at some of these super chats. DJ Generation, appreciate you, bro, with the two dollars, man. I don't know what GLHF means, but uh, yeah, I, uh, good. Well, y'all try to interpret. So somebody, let me know what GLHF may mean. I, I don't know, DJ. I ain't gonna cap. DJ Generation also gave a Rocket Shop Shop membership uh, in the chat. I don't know if somebody grabbed it yet, but go in and grab that membership. We'll be dropping a video this weekend for the members for Christmas Day, so y'all look out for that. Um, and also, he got the five dollar super chat, man. Appreciate you, brother. It says, Frank, did you see the meme of showing Luca averaging close to what Jordan in his fifth season? Y'all saw that meme, bro. I saw that meme. Let me go, let me show the super chat, man. I'm slipping. Y'all know I don't do this. This ain't my element. Let me show the super chat for the crowd. All right, here we go. Super chat from DJ. Y'all saw the meme. You know what I said about that meme, uh, uh, DJ? I said, uh, if he played a little bit of defense, he'd be cooking because that man does not play any at all he did not play any defense so i can't give him the credit that you would give mj mj is a like what nine time all first team defense like a six time steals champ just you know something like that i can't give i can't you know luca putting up jordan numbers but you got to do it on both ends of the court bro you know what i mean these guys don't really respect um uh, they don't respect guys that can't guard both ways. NBA players, you know, you might be nice on offense, but until you can do it on both ends of the court, it's going to limit you in key moments. So, yeah, he's not bad. I see you, Alex, saying he's not bad, but you can't be just, oh, he's not bad, bro. Jordan was a all-world defender, so that's why I can't give that. I'm not saying Luka isn't great. I'm saying compared to the GOAT, like, you got to do more than just average the same amount of points. You know what I mean? MJ was the guy. You know what I mean? He was the guy on both ends. Clamp you down and drop 40 on your neck. So you feel me? That's uh that's that's my take on that. You know, but Luca is one of those guys in this era. But you know, also you have to think about averaging uh 32 like Jordan did going against the Pistons and all these other teams. That was a different era of basketball. I don't know if Luca would have made it through, bro. The way he be crying to the refs. Yeah, that man would have. I don't know if he would have made it through a season, bro. He, his he would have he he would have looked like he was a boxer, because back then it was rough. So so different eras though, different eras. I just can't give him the Jordan thing because of that. That's where I'm at with that. I can't give him the, the Jordan look um, because of that. Let's go to some of these comments as well. Uh, let's see where was I at? Chet man says can't blame anyone in this game except Knicks. <laughs> uh, in my opinion, he didn't provide anything. Let's go to the box score and see what Knicks did. I don't have the graphics like Space do, so y'all gonna have to just use your imagination. So let's see, Knicks. What did Knicks do today? Eight minutes. Let's see. One, one shot. One of two, 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 two shots. One, uh, one for two from three. He had two free throw attempts. One over two. Uh, zeros across the board. Had two turn uh, two turn turnovers. Had three points to minus fourteen. Yeah, that was that's not great. I mean, I ain't gonna cap. That's not a great look for Knicks. But but honestly, I don't think he really just he really just hurt us. I just think he didn't do anything. What really hurt us was a lineup involving the Knicks. If y'all remember, um, once we were kind of close in the game, the second unit came in, they just destroyed him off the court. And 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 you know that's a lineup issue. Like some of the lineups out there, it was nasty. There was a lineups with Knicks, Tari. I think it was Knicks, Tari, Garuba. Jabari, and it was like one more non-shooter. It was a nasty lineup. If anybody I remember that lineup, put it up there. But that was some nasty stuff. Because I was throughout there. I don't know what his mind is like. Oh, this sounds good. Let me put four uh, four words out there and, and my worst shooting guard. So, yeah, that, that's crazy stuff. Um, Dan, this says, why did it take so long for Silas to change up who was covering Luca? I mean, come on, bro. At this point in the season, we don't know, man. We don't know. We try to you know, make assumptions about why. I mean, he had Jabari on them. Well, Jabari didn't start on him. They had KPJ on Luka to start the game. He was thoroughly cooked, pan-seared, fried. And then um, Jabari came in, and they started screening off Jabari. Uh, they try to attack the, you know, the Rockets try to put some uh, players adjacent to Jabari that were pretty good defenders. Uh, Tari, Tari got cooked. KJ got cooked. 
I mean, it was just it's Luca, bro. Like, unless you're gonna have a you can't stop Luca with any player. It gotta be a, a schematic. And as you guys know from the previous uh games we've had, we don't plan on these games. They uh, I guess they're just out there just happening. I guess they might watch film and say, hey, we want to do X, Y, and Z. But as far as having this elaborate like game plan where you're okay, here are the, here's the defensive assignments. If he does this, we're gonna trap him. When the trap comes, you got a bell. I want you to be here. We don't do all that. That's um, that's a little too high level for us. Um, that is not in our bag right now as a team. It's not in our coaching staff's bag as a, as a staff. And I don't know if, the, if it's the guys not able to do it or execute it. But uh, hell, I saw the Magic doing their game plans. You feel me? I saw the Orlando Magic running running their sets and and having a plan to force certain actions. So yeah, we're we're just not there to develop that. And you're gonna keep seeing these all world players drop immense amount of points on us. It's, it's not gonna stop. It's not going to stop. Uh, Swaggy D says, Rockets need to involve Barry in the offense more. I agree with you, brother. That, he has 17 shots today, um, eight from three. And that's, to me, as the number three pick, um, his those should be a shot diet. I, I'm getting past the point where I kind of want my uh, shooting order to be um, Jalen as the first uh, in, in, in that, getting the biggest piece of the pie. Uh, number two should be uh, Jabari. Number three should be Shangun. KPJ third, and then whoever else is is gonna have a good game should be that that fifth that fifth, um, because I think it's just it just flows better like that. And in this game, it was Jabari and Jalen tied uh, with with the first. They both took seventeen shots, which is good. Um, Shangun took nine. KPJ took took thirteen. Um, not a good shooting shooting game for KPJ. Went five of thirteen from the floor, one for seven from three. He was tripping out in the first quarter, bro. I thought. I, they could have afforded to pull him early um, because he was he was kind of everywhere, but in a negative way. Like he was a lot of my bads. He was doing a lot of my bads. So I, I really didn't. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. He he had an off game. He had good stretches, bad stretches, but he he had an off game today uh, after having a great game last game. So a little inconsistent. We got a scooter channel and do it do it yourself. Do it yourself. Okay, maybe the thing cut off. Merry, happy Christmas. Oh, you use Merry and happy. Appreciate you, brother. Happy holidays to everybody out there. Whatever you celebrate, happy holidays to you. Um, Sigma Meg said, how y'all staying warm? Had to postpone my holiday to Houston for the New Year's. Man, bro, uh, I'm traumatized from the last freeze we had. I think we had a freeze last year, man. One of the pipes busted in my, in my house. So uh, this year, man, I to, I'll be turning the water off at night. So I just turn my water off, turn the heater on, and just see I got a scarf on indoors, man. So. Yeah, I could feel the cold in my bones, man. I'm an old football player, so my knees are hurting right now, man. Them old offensive lineman knees is hurting. So, yeah, man, it's, it's pretty cold. It got down to the teens. Hope everybody's staying warm and your, your, your house and everything in order, man, because, yeah, it, it gets cold out here. King00098 says, with losses like this, I am okay. Yes, sir. I, I'm not too mad at this. This was a good game, and they're going to learn from those mistakes. These are just a little uh, data games that they could put in their memory banks to know that when I'm in a high leverage situation on, on the next time I can play at like this, like that. When I'm guarding Luca, I know what he likes to do. He likes to bump off when you drive, so I'm going to hug him a little bit more. He likes to have a little hesitancy, you know, just little data games. That's why you want those young guys to get the experience. You know, this is why we, we, we get mad at Eric Gordon being the one to initiate the offense late in games. We don't want that. You saw in that Magic game that um, even though they had uh, Terrence Ross play, when it was time to close out, it was all young guys out there. They put the babies out there to close out the Rockets so they could get those experiences. That's development. I don't need Eric Gordon to to you know babysit us into the game because I want KJ in there. And how about KJ KJ Martin? Let's see what he what was the stats looking like. KJ went four for seven from the field for fifty seven percent. Uh, two for two from three for 100 percent uh he had three rebounds three steals only one turnover plus 13 10 points man that guy he should start man like it's ridiculous at this point they need to trade eg so that's on stone they need to get eg out of here everybody crying for tata to play sit down okay ef hudden what you mean by that bro i think tata had a pretty good game man he i like his presence on the court i'd like to see him play a three-guard lineup with Jalen and uh and uh oh i guess you're saying because he got to play i mean damn bro we in december of 23rd our first round pick nick's still out there i, th I don't think people are mad that 
Tata not playing. This goes back to the thing with KJ and 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 um, Tate and all them last year. It's one thing to not play because you're young. Cool. The issue is when you're playing behind people, you're clearly better than. That's what fans get mad about. That's the main issue. When you're playing behind people, you're clearly better than. Uh, Sleep Art says, need more Shangoon minutes. I mean, he played, yeah, 26 minutes. I think Salah's got a little cute towards the end, bringing Garuba in. Garuba is a zero on offense at this point. Um, that He gets a little too cute with that. And you know what? I'm going to talk about that in my next video. We got to look at what's really going down with these uh, closing lineups that we have in these games uh, for that. Uh, Chet, man, we saw them double Luka at points. So glad about that defensive adjustment. Yeah, I mean, they try to double him, but then you're leaving open uh, Bertans, bro. Like, come on. It's like, yeah, it's 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 like they can't chew, walk and chew bubblegum at the same time. Like, like I said, if you're going to make a defensive plan, it's not just let's double Luka. Like, it's a whole game plan. Like, if I double, then you got to know where to rotate to. Who's the guy we want to take the shot? That's basically what they have to answer. If they look at a certain lineup on the court, they got to talk about who's the guy that they want to get the shot. And everybody else is a priority. That guy you can cheat off of a little bit, but they're cheating off of the best shooters on, on Dallas. You never give Tim Hardaway Jr. a corner three. You never give De uh, Bertans a corner three when you have other players out there. Like, even though Frank Neil Aquina was looking like prime Steph Curry, you know, those are the type of guys you help off of. Uh, Chapman, they at least tried to contain Luka. Yeah, 50. You know what I mean? 50. I guess if they didn't double him, uh, yeah, Sigma is said he would have had a, maybe a hundred point triple double. Uh, but uh, contained, they tried. You know, Swag D, uh, this is a response to Swag D. Just another reason why Salah shouldn't be their coach. Y'all know how I feel about that. A Alex Mid, just me, is it just me? Is the mic okay? We, we've we established that. I'm Mr. Roboto. Somebody said that. Da 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 da. Check your mic, check your mic, check your mic. Somebody give me. <laughs> Somebody gave me $2 to check my mic. Appreciate that, bro. Damn, I feel that. That boy told me, check your damn mic. Take two. Uh, I feel you, bro. Appreciate that sleep art. Right, tell me to check my damn mic. Uh, let's see. Uh, EF Hutton says, Eason, Bari, Uzi, in a lineup is smothered gravy. Is that good or bad? Is that good or bad? Smothered gravy. I guess that's on the defensive side. You got to explain that. That uh, that You got to explain that, brother. I don't know. That sounds a little sus to me. You got to explain that to me, bro. I ain't going to lie. Okay, let's see. Let's go on to uh, Chetman. Might have been uh, the internet uh, in the case video audio. I, no, it was my microphone. I got a, I got a trash mic. I got a trash mic. I got a trash mic. Let me see. Let me check the check the, the thing. Make sure I'm not going robot again. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. It looks like I'm still straight. Back to normal. Yeah, yeah, DJ Generation dropping some computer knowledge that I'm not particularly down with. Okay, let's see. Y'all let me know, bro, if the mic is tripping. Let's see. Uh, Scooter Channel, do it for yourself, says, uh, oh, okay, whenever I switch screens. Okay, 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 let me see. Let me see. All right, let me, I'm going to switch my background. Switch the background up. Okay. All right. All right, y'all let me know, man. Is, is it is it better? Is the mic better? Uh, Possibly. I'm getting IT help from the live stream. Appreciate y'all. Is it better? Is it better? Is it better? I'm closing out all the. I bet. I'm sorry, guys. You know, I'm I'm a big stickler for like uh, quality of video, so this is going to annoy me if it's not okay. It's better. Okay, y'all just let me know in the chat. All right, we got Rockets need to spend money on their top tier coaching. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times when we face uh, different different teams. When we face, um, you know, y'all got to look at the three levels. Who who are, who are we competing against? A lot of times the Rockets are competing against not just the players. You got to look across the coaching. Like, is it Greg Popovich? Is it an Eric Spolster? Is it a Nick Nurse? Is it a uh, a Ty Lue? Is it a, uh, 
you know, uh, you know, anybody, Steve Kerr. So these are all names, just random names I'm throwing out. But these guys, a lot of them have experience. And you got to look at, you know, who are we coaching against? Because that's just as much as a matchup as who you're playing against on the court. And I think that's an under, undervalued aspect of the wins and losses that we see. You know, that's an undervalued uh, aspect of that, um, you know, f- for, for us uh, that we got to look at. A lot of people don't really think about that aspect. I always think that if we're playing a good coach, you probably got to subtract like 10 points in just adjustments and things like that. Um, you know, diff- different different issues. You got to subtract like 10 points. Alex Smith says, usually I'm not blaming one person, but will the Rockets look for a different coach in the offseason? We kind of, you know, I, I think that they should look for a different coach because I don't like our offensive system. I don't want um, our team to, even though as great as Luka is, I don't want him to be uh, that style. I would take Luka in a heartbeat. But I don't want that style of play. I don't want Jalen to average 32 for us to be able to win a game. You know what I mean? It's so dependent on him. Everything that he does, he makes every decision uh, for that team. And, yeah, I really don't think that that's a uh, sustainable level of, of of a team. And we've seen what it what it did with James Harden here, as great as he was as well. They put a lot of different teams around him. And, um, you know, it. he just got tired at the end of every year. Um, so yeah, I just I just don't think that is a sustainable uh, method of of trying to build a team. So um, yeah, I think we need a new coach because that's really what Coach Silas made his name off of was uh, Luka Doncic, and looks like Luka is is really pretty much fine without Coach Silas. Uh, so yeah, uh, let me see. I'm gonna try to I'll probably skip some comments. Uh, make sure you have a profile to accept. Look, look at the DJ man, appreciate you, brother accept your gift. So make sure you're not a bot. When you see those donations come up in there, you can grab it. A uh, DJ generation is the chat boss, the chat King, the chat shot caller. Um, yeah, he's definitely uh, one of the best fans out there uh, for the Houston Rockets, man. Very passionate. Shout out to him. Uh, let's see. We got, uh, oh, I skipped one. Shangun and Jabari chemistry. Did y'all see the little, little handoff uh, Shangun did in the post to Jabari? Man, if y'all were, man, y'all don't know, man. I, I had a video, if y'all haven't watched, when we first started this channel, one of the first videos that I made was one with um, Shangun and, and Jalen, and I compared him to Pal Gasol. And in that video, I had said that one of the things that the Lakers did in their uh, two-peat when they won the championship was they were able to um, have two bigs on the floor at the same time with um, with Bynum and with uh, with uh, Powell, with Kobe, obviously they ran a triangle uh, offense. And a lot of things that they did with uh, Bynum and Powell, they used to run two-man actions, a lot of two-man's pick and rolls from the paint. Two-man, and if it was, uh, if it was uh, and Powell would initiate it because he could play make. And they also ran some pick and pops. They ran a lot of actions with the two-man screening for each other, bro. When we drafted Jabari Smith Jr., that is what one of the first things that I envisioned was that two-man game. That means a a big screening for another big. And even though it was by accident today because it was on a broken play, like to me, this is where I get to the point where I say I'm I don't like our offensive system. It lacks creativity. Like you could you if I was a coach, that would be in my playbook to do some screening actions between a, a, a big and a post in Shangun that could pass and a shooter like Jabari, both around 6'11". You just, you can toy with teams. And then the chaos you create inside in the paint from doing that, the shots you're going to generate from the outside because you have two mismatches going on at the same time. You have the mismatch of Shangun as a post player. You have Jabari as a, a shooter with a high release that's taller than the, the other guys. But in order for those actions, you have to be intentional. Your guards have to be okay with that. Um, it, it's so much on the team that we could really be doing to explore what they do. So yeah, it, it you know, I've definitely seen that their chemistry it is going up. We got uh Roderick Dixon, boy, big Rod talking about hit the like button. So make sure you hit the like on the video, support the channel, giving you entertainment after these Rockets game. 
Um, good, bad, and, uh, and ugly. A lot of ugly. Uh, Dan Dish says, Green seems like he has slightly regressed from his rookie season. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to – I think that there is some uh, – let's strip away just the um, – let's strip away the shooting. Let's strip away the um, – you know, the the stats and just look at his game overall. One thing Jalen is doing a lot this season is that um, he's getting to the line more, which is one of the big criticisms that, you know, we have for him last year um, that uh, he was avoiding contact. So he's trying to initiate it, even though he's not getting all the calls, he's getting to the line more. So that's a positive sign. Let's look at the playmaking. He is making some passes and reads in real time in full speed that you would see the best guards in the NBA make. And his, even though his assist numbers are down, if you look at some of my other videos, I've talked about just his overall, just his passing metrics are just good. There's a lot of them are better than Kevin Porter Jr.'s. So to me, that's a positive as well. The scoring, he's scoring more, even though he's he's less efficient this year. That's also a positive. So I think what he's really regressed in is his shooting. Um, and it's it's not as consistent as you would like it, but to me, shooting is one of the most, like the last things that you look at in a player, especially one that's shown that they could shoot. So I look at his game in totality. Defensively, he's better. He's a better playmaker. Um, he's more aggressive. He's more assertive, especially when he's on the units uh, with uh, the second unit. You can see his aggression is there. The thing that he needs to work on is his shot selection is not great. He has really, really bad shots. He takes a lot of bad shots, a lot of hard shots. And to me, it's a that's a product of his decision making in the offensive system because he's playing to his weaknesses. So if we can get him to the point where he understands his game more, that may take a couple years for him to get to where he's comfortable. Um, but I think he's on track as it relates to uh, to to uh, other like shooting guards that are in his, his path. There's people saying Anthony Edwards regressed this season. You know, what I mean, you've seen the little review of uh People saying that Scotty Barnes is a bust. Like, bro, this dude just won Rookie of the Year. You know, what I mean, with these young guys, you can't you can't use shooting as a measure of how they're doing because it's going to be up and down. To me, I just look at their full games. What are they improving on? So, uh, you know, what I mean, that that's really what you got to look at. That's really what you got to look at. Roger Dixon said he had a long stretches of bad. Uh, Dan, he haven't been that bad. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Haven't been that bad. He's been up and down. Uh, last year he was trash for a minute. Um, Chapman says, I'm so glad we finally made adjustments in the game. Both defensively, we're trying to trap and double Luca and offensively, we're giving Shangu the keys. Yes, sir. I think at some point, if it's you got it, like it'd be insane if we didn't just go through. I think the Dallas just kind of forced that. And if we didn't do it, it would look crazy. It would look crazy. Um, I wonder if uh, um, Kevin Porter being in foul trouble had any effect on that as well. DJ Generation with the $5 super chat. Yeah, I already read that. Appreciate you, brother. Yes, he is not Michael Jordan. He got to play defense. Uh, Dan Dietz says, am I saying, is it Ditch, Deitch? Uh, Roderick said, to Roderick, he has been inconsistent so far this season. He keeps launching threes. Yes, sir, Dan. That's what I was just talking about. That shot selection is garbage right now. He really has to improve on that uh, immensely. Uh, Jamon M says, did Ty Ty finally replace Knicks? In the rotation, I don't know. I hope so. I seen that they they took Knicks out and he really never came in. And Tata just rocked out the rest of the way. I love Tata's game, man. The entry, the post entry passes he makes are so professional. Like this dude inserts the post pass and just cuts. He's just so smart, man. He just needs to get his confidence. I hate that he is so. Um, Tata is so uh, passive. Like, bro, he has to know in this offense, you got to be aggressive as a guard. Now, somebody pointed out on Twitter and uh, saying that uh, he's scared he's going to go out like Jay Gup. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a good point. I guess he he look at what they're doing to Gup, and if he mess around and have a couple turnovers trying to be aggressive, he might be in, a, in a, you know what I mean? He might be in Beijing next week. So, you know, I, get, I don't know what type of – see, that's what happens when you have inconsistency in your rotations. The guys really can't express and play how they want to play. So some guys, they think that if they get in the game, they got to take every shot. And some think that if they take a shot, they're going to be, you know, benched. So, yeah, I think he just has to get empowered by the coach to know that, hey, I want you to be aggressive. 
So yeah, we'll, we you know we don't know what, what those conversations about. JNRZ says Shangun is the best offensive f- facilitator on the team. Brain dead not to see his value at this point. Yeah, to me, if if you don't see the value in Shangun as a uh, as the one of basically the offense of the team, uh, then you just don't like them. Then you just just come out and say you don't like them. You feel me? And that's okay if you don't like them. Uh, this is Dan replying to Rod saying Green shooting percentage is down in every yeah he's down to like twenty some percent. I don't think that's just to me. Those are ups and downs, um, I, just ups and downs. I got to look at how he's finishing at the basket also because that was really bad last year. Is if that's improved. also want to see just his different shot profiles and what the percentages are. But his just base shooting percentages, yeah, they're down. They're down. And to me, it's a lot of it is uh, based on, on shot selection. Okay, plug break. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, don't be a dope. Don't be lame, man. Don't be out here looking weak. Hit the like button on this video. Subscribe to the channel. Stop by the Rockets Chop Shop uh, uh, merch store as well. Pick up some merch there. Rep the city. Rep your team. Rep the channel. Appreciate all of y'all for supporting us. That's the Chop Shop, man. We we try to stay locked in. Alex Mash says he's not a bad defender, really. Talking about Luca. Luca doesn't have the p- uh, Pippen, though he barely beat us, and he had a 50 ball. Hey, Pippen, ain't, I mean, yeah, he ain't got a Pippen, but I mean, still, like the comparison between him and MJ is scoring. But the what made Michael Jordan great was the two-way ability. You got a guy that, like I said, he could do everything Luka was doing except playmake, um, but he would also clamp your best defender. I mean, your best offensive player or the best guard offensive player. This dude, once again, like I said, y'all don't make me pull up. I could pull it up now. You know, they got screen sharing options, but I'm scared my mic's going to go out if I try to do anything extra. But y'all go to basketball reference and just look at Michael Jordan's jacket. Look at his uh, his resume. Look at the defensive side of his resume. That'll speak for itself um, in that comparison. Uh, Alex Mass, for sure, for sure. Chetman says, yeah, that's the thing about Jordan. People forgot how good he was on defense, too. Dude was just fundamentally sound. He was always had the right hand and place and length. Yeah, he he was he was just he was a good defender, man. On ball, off ball, um, you know, he was a good defender. There's really nothing that you could really do to attack him. And he was smart. Had a high IQ on both ends of the court. And he's a killer. Now Luca's a killer too. Um, but Jordan was just that guy. It's just really no comparison, honestly. Uh, Mario, what's up, Mario? What's up, Chop Shop and Rockets fan? Was good with y'all. All right, let's go to let's see party time, uh, anim, animal time. Okay, weird name, but okay. The old Pistons would, yeah, they would have had Luca and uh, yeah, Luca would have been out of there, bro. He would have been black and blue, like back in them days, boy. All that like crying and stuff. Now nah, they the refs wasn't trying to hear it. Players, damn sure ain't trying to hear that. Well, they would have had Luca bruised up. They would have had him out of there. Let's see. Chet says Jordan is one of the defensive players. Uh, is one of the defensive players, best defensive players at his position. Facts. Facts. Like I said, go to basketballreference.com. Just look at his little, you know, they got the little resume thing on the side, and you'll be able to um, see what they're talking about. And I might pull that up in a second. And let's see. Team needs to get in better better shape, possibly. Okay, audio tripping again. I think we already, hopefully we've passed that juncture. Uh, Let's see. Uh, E.F. Hutton says, I would have played Jalen, Tari, K.J. Martin, Bari, and Uzi down the stretch. I think they did. Minus, let me see who's missing from there, bro. You put um, Jalen, Tari, K.J., Bari, and Uzi. Uh, I ain't going to lie. That's probably a nasty lineup. I'm not going to lie. Because I'm looking at that lineup there. You got a bunch of non-creators uh uzman is a non-shooter tari is uh, ice iso tunnel vision god then jalen is you know he can't isolate for nothing so to me jalen needs shangun jalen needs shangun um if you're gonna have a lineup with just jalen without any other creators you got to have shangun out there as a second creator jalen needs a secondary uh, creator off of him um yeah usman is a zero on offense man zero Zero. All that um, eight for eight to start the season was cap. Uh, Pablo uh, Jared Nunez. I knew Mike was an android. I'm not sure what that means, bro. Maybe he means Michael Jones a robot. 
Okay, Jordan is one of the best defensive players ever at his position. Yes, sir. Uh, the Rockets uh, stream. I mean, they're streaming. Can Jabari win Rookie of the Year? This thing now. This robot been asking this question for uh, for about a month and a half now. Now, before I be ignoring him, like, okay, bro. Yeah, we know you're on the algorithm to ask these questions, but that's a good question. Now, does he have a shot? Now, um, obviously, Paolo is going nuts. You got Matherin. He he's he's going crazy, but you know there was a. Uh, all that talk about Herb Jones and all that last year for his defensive play. Herb was not having 24-point games now. Mm -hmm. If Jabari can put together a little – and did, he hasn't even hit the um, the post-All-Star game, post game um, boom that you normally see these rookies hit. So, I mean, you never know. Somebody could get injured. He goes on a little tier where he's guarding the best players and dropping 20-plus. If Jabari can average like maybe like 17 and eight and be get first team all defensive votes, maybe, maybe some he might get some votes. I just, but probably not. If if, if Paolo is healthy, it should be Paolo. If y'all watched, man, that magic game, he was polished, man. Whoever Paolo's trainer, I know his mom is a coach. Whoever trained that kid, good job, man. God damn, that kid is, his game is polished. You know, there was a time back in the day when guards and players used to have the post game, man. That's a lost art. These guards do not know how to play in the post. And I see there's some Kobe Kobe chatter in the in the in the chat. Like one thing about Kobe, the footwork in the post, and one thing I respect about like a Kyrie Irving in his game is 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 the ability to be able to have such a well-rounded game at the guard position. And this is where Jalen and his class and a lot of these these guys lack. They're explosive athletes. They can dunk. They can shoot, but not be, having that footwork because you're you're relying solely on athleticism really hinders their development. Um, this happened to Zach Levine. It took him a couple of years to get that bag where he can get into the post and, and start killing from there. Uh, I respect Kyrie for that. I respect um, uh, Jamal Murray, a rare young player that has an elite post game. You know why he's not a great athlete? So by just by share necessity to have a diverse offense to make it in the nba he had to add a, add a post game that's why you got to train your kids if you're if you got kids you want them to play sports train them to their weaknesses never let them rely on their strengths in order to make it you got to make your weaknesses your strength so yeah that that footwork is, is definitely something that you know all these um all these guys really need to work on uh coming out uh recently uh, Dan says the bad boys played in the era that was official. Yeah, they was they was they was out there prison fighting, prison fighting. Let's see. DJ Generation says Frank, the audio is back to normal, but I think it's a RAM surge issue when your computer is working on something else while streaming. Streaming. Yeah, I think so, bro. I got like I'm one of those people that I will have literally like a thousand pages open and leave them on. And my, you know, what I mean, I'm one of them cats, bro. So I had to close. I literally, as y'all were telling me, I'm closing out a lot of these things that I don't need. So I'm hoping that's what fixed it. But yeah, it was, uh, I had like a million pages open. Uh, Chet, man, my problem is Nick's walks it up, dribbles out 10 seconds on the clock, and then tries to run the offense. At least when Tata is passive, dude is passing and then cutting before 18. That's facts. There was a play that KPJ um, dribbled the ball till like it was seven seconds left in the corner. I was like, what are we doing? Yeah, I, th I don't think Knicks is that bad in doing that. I think um, probably the worst culprit is KPJ. Um, Knicks usually does, tries to get something going. Um, but yeah, they could speed up the offense a lot. To me, I think they were saying, I don't know who said this, but ev every – whether it's a made basket or a miss, it should be like a fast break for them. They really got to attack teams coming out, but they got to wait. I don't know how many, how many times I've seen fast breaks get stopped because they want to set up an offense. They're really dumb. Alex Vargas says, Silas, you idiot. Why did you bench Jalen in the fourth quarter at the nine-minute mark? This coach is brain dead, I swear. Was that where it fell? I think it was – I mean, let me see. In that fourth quarter, he – yeah. I, I don't know if it was the Jalen thing. I just thought that lineup he had out there um, that had uh, that nasty lineup. I don't know. One of them had Knicks in it. Knicks and Garrison Matthews. They were getting toasted. Um, the non-shooters lineup were really bad. Bruno played bad. The bench was just was just awful today. 
the bench was was awful. I mean, they didn't really really bring anything to the table for us. They didn't bring much to the table. Uh, Chetman says exactly, just drains the shot clock doing nothing. Yeah, that's a couple of our guards. Uh, Dan says bench KPJ and, and give Tata an opportunity. Dan, I think it's political, bro. They're not going to do that. They're not going to do that. Looking around, I can't find the allow gifts option. Maybe next time. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. D, uh, we're talking about Sigamix at DJ. Sigamix, I'm not sure. I've never looked at it or tried to do that. Uh, why can't I find the allow gifts option? Uh, yeah, I don't know, Rod. You got it. You could probably got to help me out with that, brother. But uh, we just we just gonna talk it up to the to the Mavs. Being uh, uh, YouTube is mad that we let Luca drop fifty, so they don't they don't want us getting any gifts. Third Coast Alliance says Ty Ty came in over Knicks. Yeah, he did. Um, initially Knicks came in first, then Third Coast. I mean, then uh, then Ty Ty, and I think Coach Silas was like, okay, let him rock. Now this is the thing that would be annoying me about our coaching staff is they'll see this, and then we won't see Ty Ty for another month. Maybe they let him play as a Christmas gift or something. But you, you never know. You never know. Roderick says you have to be on a computer to get that option. Oh, DJ. Okay, appreciate you, DJ Generation. Schooling them boys in the chat. Scott Martin says rough game for Tari. He's been having. Yeah, Tari was. Uh, I, I I don't know, man. Like that, the tunnel vision is getting frustrating. It's a bit frustrating um, because I, he is such a good player with a lot of potential. I'm hoping this isn't something that is going to be an issue, like his decision making, because he makes a lot of bad decisions. Like when he gets the ball, all he sees is just the basket. Like it could be there was a play that stuck out of my head. It was a fast break. Y'all remember what I'm talking about? It was him, three other Rockets. It was like three on one or something like that. He had, I don't know, it was KJ Martin running with him. Just pass it ahead, bro. The lob was there. He could have done anything, but what he did went for it, missed the layup. Sickening. Yeah, it was sickening, bro. That was a uh, that was sickening to see. Yeah, he was jacking up shots. He hit a, he hit a big three, and he was you know. But yeah, his decision making is bad. I think he's one of those guys that needs structure. Him and Jay Gup. Like in our offense, what I say, we have a buffet offense where you basically get to pick. Whatever you like. You know, if you're a ball handler, you can run whatever play you want. They should Knicks out there looking off Jalen Green to go ISO and air ball. Uh, you got guys just doing whatever they want. And some people just don't thrive in that environment, bro. There's people that they're not um, – that's not their thing. You know what I mean? They're, they You have to give them structure. And for Tari, I think – and him and Josh Christopher, they're one of those players. I think if you give them a structure where they have a very defined role – and they have consequences for falling out of those roles until they can prove they can do the basic function of their role. They have less responsibilities and you build out from there. Then I think they'll function better. Not everybody has the ability to uh, to be able to flourish in freedom um, like our offense is. So I think Tari is going to benefit from a more structured setting where, OK, this is your job. And when you variate from it, we're going to pull you like after that, sh that shot he did, I would have benched him. I would have taken him out the game. And just let him think about that. You do that a couple of times, it'll be in his mind. Let me pass this ball. Let me pass this ball. So, yeah, that's he He got to learn to play better. Let's see. Uh, Alex Vargas, Silas, us fans. Bro, Silas not watching us. <laughs> but I feel you, bro. You're just saying it out into the ether uh, so that um, people could know. We're tired of being the joke of an entire NBA. How do you still have a job here in Houston? Literally going on the third season in a row, being the worst team in the league. I'm with you, bro. I'm with you. Hey, Alex, I'm going to just tell you, brother, just you just got to just chalk it up to whatever. Just save it for next season, brother. This a, is a lost season. They just out here just they training. We out here practicing on NBA time. So uh, but yeah, the Silas thing. Like, I feel like honestly, I feel like he's going to have one more year, sadly, um, but he's going to have one more year and then. Uh, I guess he'll have to prove what whether he was faking this whole time, like some people think, and whether him and Stone were faking or we're really a bad team. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see about that. Let's see. Tata Ansi, he running, he rushing. He's not better than KPJ. You can play Jalen and Eason and KJ Martin when Scoot is out. Tata is definitely not better than KPJ. Uh, but um, I don't think he's Ansi. I think he's playing passively. He he's not he's scared of his. He's scared to be aggressive. He's not being aggressive. That's his issue right now. Because to me, 
he can, like I say, he can make every pass in the book. And uh, he he is an actual cerebral player. And I feel like once he gets his comfortability, there's going to be a controversy in the in the fan base if he can get there. If he gets there, there's going to be controversy because when you see the level of play of a floor general compared to what we tried out there, uh, you guys are going to be able to uh, to kind of know the difference there. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, we got a super chat from Joe Blue. Appreciate you, brother. Now, I'm sorry, guys, for not getting to these shoes. I'm just trying to make sure my mic work, man. Uh, Super Chat says, two U.S. dollars. Our three worst players, E.G., Knicks, Matthews. Tata and Jacob are good. Okay. Uh, Worst players, yeah, Knicks, Matthews. Let me see. I ain't going to lie. Jacob ain't been good, man. I know we want him to play, but there's a reason he's not playing. I think we want him to play because he's young and he's a first-round pick, and you want him to get that stuff out of the system, but Let's not act like this dude wasn't out there just like like acting like he's never played basketball before. A lot of the issues that he has are his fault. A lot of the reason he's not playing is his fault. But I think the argument is you we shouldn't just banish him to the G League just because of that. Because if that was the case, Knicks shouldn't be playing. Uh, Tari shouldn't be playing a lot of stretches. Hell, KPJ shouldn't be playing a lot of stretches. Jalen shouldn't be playing a lot of stretches. So he just got to know that he doesn't have that cachet that those guys do. Just like with the Tari thing, he needs structure, but he has to learn to like just be more controlled. Like he thinks he's Jalen, he's not. You're not Jalen, bro. You're you're um you're a backup. Uh, Chet man, yeah. It's whenever you switch screens. Okay, yeah. I think we established that. Um, da da da. Let me get through da da. Somebody said too many tasks. I swear we just went through this. Okay, let's go down. Sounds good. Sounds good, Chris, brother. Oh, here we go. Somebody says, aren't we still paying Maury and D'Antoni? I think that that was over last year, if I'm not mistaken. Chapman says, so sad we let Nick Nurse walk when we had him with the Vipers for so long. But what we had Mike D'Antoni back there. I'm not going to lie. I can't imagine um, thinking even Kevin McHale. Like, nobody knew Nick Nurse was who he was. Because when he went to Toronto, he was an assistant under um, under their coach over there. I'm blanking on his name right now. So... It wasn't like they just knew he was going to be this guy, even though he'd won at every level that he's been at. I mean, yeah, the signs were there. He's a winner, just like Abdel Fattah. You know, I mean, I think Abdel Fattah, hopefully in the future, maybe he's the next coach. You don't know. Uh, Maybe he's that next guy, but I'm not sure what his role is in the current administration. Dwayne Casey, there you go. And it's weird that um, the Rockets brought Abdel Fattah in and Silas didn't, which is a weird dynamic to me. Because usually coaches get to pick their entire staff, and he was not one of the coaches that that um, that that was chosen uh, that Silas picked. Uh, the Rockets put him there. Let's see. Dan says there has been no development or improvement with this team since Silas has been the coach. That's a that's an arguable point. You know what I mean? That's an arguable point. There's some nights where it seems like the team is playing off of just sheer talent, um, and you know off of just sheer talent. You would like to see some system wins. I don't think we've had a system win yet where it's like we won because of our our coaching or our systematic approach or something like the offense, the game plan won us the game. We win usually when our guys are shooting in God mode or they're going off dropping 30 and 40 points, which to me is just random wins. Yeah, the wins are real random. So I can't say that uh, it's a... you know, I kind of I'm not going to say they didn't develop. Though. Like I pointed out about Jalen, he's developed on some things. Um, some guys have regressed in certain parts of their game. Honestly, I think Shangun is um, I don't know what to attribute this to, except the fact that they're trying to diminish his talent is uh, his passing has went down um, a lot. I think that's also a system issue. His playmaking. We got to see some flashes of it today when they're intentional about playing with him. Um, one guy that has not uh, diminished or, or regressed is K.J. Martin. And he's the guy we're trying to trade, which is crazy uh, for the Rockets part. Party Tom, Animal Tom says, Shangun and Barry are starting to really click. So many points off Shangun screens and looks. Uh, and looks. I think we can be inside out team. Us killing the paint opens up the three ball. We got to take advantage. But I want to mail this to Coach Silas, man. I'd mail that to Coach Silas. Roderick Jens, uh, Dixon shouting out to chat boss. That's your boy DJ generation the chat boss he's the one holding it down in the chat appreciate the chat boss y'all show respect to dj he's the elder statesman of the chat 
of the chop shop uh shout out to all all of our members as well that have all the administrative duties y'all look out for that six nine six nine six nine person that try to drop the, all that stuff in our account so if anybody see them get them out of here swaggy d says to sigma migs update your billing account on google play store damn bro you giving him a <laughs> giving that boy a customer service i feel look at that where can you go to get basketball talk you're gonna hear hear about ram surges and uh and billing questions if you want to file your taxes just put it in there put it in the chat and i'm sure one of the listeners is going to be able to give you tax advice and legal advice too dan says shangun should be playing more as well as having the ball in his hands and more and less in kpj's it felt like kpj didn't have the ball a lot this game he kind of was playing off ball and to me that the team looked better you know i mean the team looked a lot better d titus says what do y'all think about frank vogel being the head coach now i can't say no, dude I, at this point bro if if we were a better team i'd be like uh but at this point, uh, having an established head coach that's actually won a championship, I think he'd be a hell of a head coach. I mean, he built uh, that Indiana Indiana squad with Paul George and Lance Stevenson and took them boys toe to toe. You know, first round to, against LeBron. I think they, they might have went seven in one of those series. But yeah, I think he he's a great like culture setter type of coach. I don't think he's going to be the coach that gets you to where you're trying to go. But that's the type of guy you probably want to bring in to start the show to build that foundation because he emphasizes defense and discipline uh, on the court. So, yeah, I, I, if they can get Frank Vogel that, to me, that'd be a great hire. Because to me, um, having a, a rookie head coach to coach rookies and having a rookie GM is not ideal. Somebody got to have some experience in that in that situation. Uh, San, San, oh boy, you're going to give me this one. San Cackley says, say we get a new head coach. And it worked out okay. Where do you see this young core in two years? So let's say, let's do a thought exercise, guys. So let's say we, they fire Coach Silas this offseason. And they bring in a Vogel or Quinn Snyder. I don't know why Quinn Snyder would take this job. But um, they bring in somebody. And they run a system that we like. And everybody is playing to their strength. You know what has to happen next year? It's going to be ground zero again. Because you're going to have to install the news scheme or whatever it is the first year the players got to get comfortable in that so by the time they finally feel comfortable in that the next season which is going to be the season after next that's when you might see some some coming ups and then you know maybe the third season you might really see them kind of make that push i think with if we stayed with our current roster like with everybody intact and maybe add a couple of vets here and there they're probably two years away um from it uh from being like that team and it's really going to be heavy on a lot of Jalen and Jabari and Shangun and some of these guys really taking leaps every single season um is it possible yeah um but I think as far as in the short term like maybe next season um I think the only way that our team would be like a play-in playoff team is if they go get some some like really good bets like maybe a, a, a top 20 top 25 vet maybe two of them to come to the team now a lot of people use the example of the new orleans pelicans as a oh well they just added cj mccullum i mean cj mccullum yes they added him they also added um uh larry nance which is a great vet but you got to remember that brandon ingram was already a top 25 player when he got there so we don't have the brandon ingram to pair up with a cj mccullum to bring vets into um to me, that's really what made them. We don't have a Brandon Ingram, so we don't have a star player. And honestly, we should have got a Brandon Ingram from the uh, Harden trade, but we didn't. That was the market. That's how James Harden hold us. And for all that's lost with the James Harden situation is the fact that when he made his decision to leave here, not only did he make his decision to leave, he also narrowed down the field to the point that we were only limited to a few teams. So the returns, even though, you know, I mean, as we watch the Nets look um, like they could win the East, the returns may not be as great as we uh, those picks are are going to be. Um, and we also didn't get the star player you typically get with these um, blockbuster trades. Um, so the Harden trade is still pending. It's still pending. Uh, the Harden trade is still pending because I think all we've gotten from it so far is uh, Tari Eason. Right. So we we gonna see, man. But I think, yeah, the team is about two two years away. 
um, even with a, with a good coach. Someone said we don't play to our guys' strengths. That is someone is right here, buddy. <laughs> I say that pretty much every day. Right here. It says that Silas is doing that Silas doing great development while tanking. Um, I don't I don't think once again, I don't think Silas is trying to tank. I don't think bros trying. I, I just think that he is uh the front office is tanking. I think Stone is tanking with this roster. Um, but I don't think Silas is trying to tank tank. I think Silas is is also developing on the job like our players are because he's never been a head coach. But then y'all have to remember that. Sansa's playoffs. Yeah, I don't think that word is going to be in our vocabulary for a couple of years. Uh, Jay Mon says Silas needs at least one more year with a better quality roster before we decide. That's a fair take. That's a fair take. And that's and if it goes back to what I was saying in my video, um, what I you know what I brought up is that I honestly think that for Stone and Silas, in this rebuild thing they're doing, their trump card to get out of it is just to upgrade the roster and infuse it with a bunch of vets. And they can do it. He can Stone can do it if he wants. He might just they might just get a bunch of vets to, you know, let's say Harden does want to come back. He comes back, you bring another guy with them, you get a bench of a bunch of vet players, and then Coach Hollis gets to coach his all world point guard in his system, and it might look good. Um, but at the end of the day, then that means the rebuild was a failure. Well, I guess it depends on how you look at it. If you're looking at it, if you want to organically rebuild the team by having young players be the reason that you win and you want to build the dynasty, then it'll be a failure. But if your point of a rebuild was just to acquire enough assets to make a trade, then success. Honestly, I'm telling y'all, I think the latter is what's going to happen, bro. I think we're accumulating assets to make a big move, a splash to get a player. Because if you got to remember, Stone is from the school of Maury, Right. Stone is from the school of Maury, and one thing about uh, Daryl Maury, he always is a big game hunter. He's going to try to get the biggest name on the market every time. He doesn't care. Y'all seen how careless he was with first round picks. So you know this is the, this is the guy that uh, that that Stone learned under. I don't see why he should vary too far from that uh, school of thought. And to me, if if all else fails, let's say Jabari is a bust, let's say Tari is a bust. If all else fails, man. Um, then I, I think they can easily just say, okay, we got money, we have assets, let's go get some guys and just at least make it look competitive so we can keep our job. So, yeah, I think that's in the works. Uh, Gary Banks says, when Shingun got the ball, players were scrambling to get open. Finally, we are reacting to him. Growth, yes, definitely. A lot. It looked better, man. And I love, the like, if him, Jalen, Jabari can develop a real synergy, man, and if they can somehow, some way, put it all together as a three-man game, because there's we can do two man is cute. Two man is cute. When you get to three man, man, that's and they're all three young guys. When you get a three man, I'm trying to think who has a three man game in the NBA right now. What team has a three man game? Okay, let me see. The Warriors, obviously, right? The Warriors got a three man game with Steph, Dre, and Clay. Um, I don't know. It's, it's not a lot of teams that have a lot of three man games. I think just Golden State. And when you can get to three man, you're talking dynasty, bro. If they got enough talent, because a lot of teams don't get to that level. The Pels, uh, let me see the Pels. Okay, the Pels got. Okay, y'all, y'all, y'all put it in the chat, man. What three man from these teams? Cavs, I don't see it. And when I mean by three man, I mean not just three good players. I'm talking about three players that are synergistic with each other that play off of each other. Right. So when you watch the Warriors, a lot of times what they do is they'll have Draymond get in the post and have Stephen Clay set screens for each other on the perimeter and just play with the defense. And then he'll pass it out to one of them. And if you try to overplay the the screening, then uh, one of them will slip and cut and he'll pass it or he'll just flip a uh, spin off on you, and go to the basket himself. It is just, they just mess with you. So I'm trying to y'all put out if you're gonna put a team in the chat, put a team in the chat, then put the three men that you think, and we'll we'll look at those. But I think we can get to a gar, a, a Jabari, a a, a, a Shangun, and a Jalen three man game. Oh, man, that'll be so deadly because you got a floor spacer, you got a slasher that could shoot and come off screens, and you got a post present that could pass. Like I said, man, just a little imagination goes a long way. Clip Corleone, seventh day familia says party time. We won our first championship of the back-to-back -back running the inside-out offense, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, with a dream. 
Yes. Yes. Dream was, that was an innovative uh, form of offense at that time. And, uh, you know, having that one in four out back then with Hori and them boys and uh, all them shooters around Dream, him being a post present that's able to draw a double team and pass it out and make plays. And then when it was time to put the baby to sleep, he, he's still over. To, he, he'll shoot over two players because he just has an unblockable shot. That's really what you want out of your your um, your big man. Dan says uh, anyone is an upgrade over Silas. Not anyone, but damn near everyone. I ain't going to cap. But uh, Will Pinto, Silas out, out, can't believe we still give Bruno minutes. I can't believe Bruno was actually a thing over Shangun. I know some of y'all don't like Shangun. It's cool, but y'all 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 know I, I watch a lot of basketball. The Bruno thing was silly. Look, we can Let's just put that to bed now. Clips Corleone said, I trust Frank as a coach. Nah, bro. Cosales knows more about basketball in his uh, pinky toe than I do in my whole body. Not to to me, like the Coach Silas thing is never an academic or like his knowledge base. To be a head coach, you got to be able to get what's in your mind into uh, that message. Got to go to a bunch of other people, and they got to do it. And that takes a lot of different factors: leadership and the ability to inspire, making people want to do stuff for you, discipline, accountability, all this stuff that you got to be able to do. And that should translate to people executing that. And I think where he gets in, into trouble is not his schematics, is not his thoughts. He, he's probably a brilliant mind in basketball. It's just that it's not reaching the end point of the players the way he wants it to reach. And if he doesn't have a voice that, even though they might like him, and everybody says that, oh, they like him, they like him, that doesn't mean anything. You know what I mean? There's a lot of coaches that you might not like, but you're going to respect them and you're going to execute the plan or you know they're going to get on you or they're going to take you out the game. So I think that's his issue is uh, the accountability and discipline part of it. Uh, Alex says, you are 100 percent. This lousy coach has embarrassed a culture of losing, embrace the culture of losing and is holding back our talented young stars. Get rid of this loser, lame coach. Now, damn, he stole your girl, bro. <laughs> I ain't mad at you, bro. I can't be mad at nobody to feel. I mean, you know, the Houston Rockets, we haven't been the greatest team in the world. But I think it's okay for fans, especially if you've been a fan long enough, to expect um, better from your franchise, even though if they are trying to rebuild. Um, it's, you know, you could, there's levels. You can't either just be all trash or all good. Um, there's in between. Some people expect better from the rebuild. They expect more culture, more structure, more accountability, better players, um, you know, better, a better roster. And, you know, that's perfectly fine. And when you, when you don't get that, you know, I don't, I can't tell nobody how to feel, you know, you, you know, that's how you feel. That's how you feel. DJ generation says Shangun should have at least one magic Johnson type pass highlight a game. If they use them correctly, bro, I watched that. Um, who was it? That Denver was playing. Was it LA? Was it LA or Memphis? Man, Jokic is good. Y'all Jokic is good. Shangun had that pass where he got um, KJ Martin on the lob from full court. Um, but yeah, he should have one of those a game. But Jokas does that damn near every play. It's crazy. He's so good. Okay, Rashawn, what's good, brother? What's good with you? Let's skip that. Let's see what we got here. Jalen Green might be a little too cocky for his own good. Look like he getting humbled a little bit, bro. Yeah, he ain't been talking too much. Uh, he he getting humbled a little bit. All that waving, you know what? All that waving away teams. I said that about that'll come back and bite you. Now you can't be telling people bye bye when you only got seven wins. You feel me? I, you know what I mean? You telling people about, you know, it was cool for the Hawks game. But, bro, just be humble, dog. Be humble. You still, um, you know, you still learning in this league. Scott Martin says, Jalen regressing, bro. Get out of here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jalen is definitely not regressed. He's just not shooting good. Uh, DJ Generate Shingo reminds me of a cross between Joe Kitch and Vlade Divac. That's, that's a, I think, because mm, Vlade could pass. I don't know if y'all remember. I don't know if it's a cross. What's the cross, I guess? I would say if I looked at both of them, he's probably more Vlade than Jokic, in my opinion, if, if I was doing a comp. Um, I think the Jokic thing, Jokic is on a different level, bro. I think what, what separates Jokic is the shooting ability. It's the shooting ability. Shooting ability. Um, Mashengu can develop a shot. And what's up with him not taking threes anymore? Like, I, I need him to get that in his bag. That's really what's going to open him up to be a Jokic. 
appreciate that scooter says don't waste your life hit the like button yes sir i can't get how people come in here you're gonna sit on here on this live stream for an hour and a half and not hit like bro you just a hater if we got 80 people in here it should be 80 likes so the let me do my math 35 minus 80 let me see i went to pv now so y'all gotta y'all gotta okay let me see 35 minus 80 what is that uh 45 so it's 45 of y'all in here hating bro y'all just sitting here enjoying the free show watch me read off y'all comments and just be like i'm not gonna like this this video you just a hater bro hit the like button man y'all show love show love to the channel dj generation jg4 savage appreciate that dj generation the chat boss all right let me go through i think i'm catching up to y'all i think i don't know uh jabari uh ef hudson says jabari cannot win rookie of the year talking to that robot nope nah he is one of the worst shooters in his draft class damn no uh damn you don't give no room for improvement bro it's only december 23rd i think you know it's a long season bro it's a long shot i'm you know i'm not gonna argue that but it is a long season it is a long season and i think that um you know there the circumstance for him to win it he has to go supernova in the second half of the season but i think it's uh paulo is clearly the favorite you know no uh no no cap there all uh, right let's see uk ef ukpj i'm not sure what that is somebody said why is shangu not getting over 30 minutes and do you think he should get 30 yeah i think he should get 30 plus minutes i think that him and Jalen should be paired together more um they they're they really should be paired together mostly and i think him and Jalen should be paired together without kpj sometimes um i think that uh the lineups still are you know we went 12 deep in the first quarter or first half which is crazy to me uh i just don't get it i don't get it i don't i don't get it the lineups make no sense a guy like garrison matthews misses a whole week they say he ain't in touch a basketball since he's been sick and he coming in over guys like ty ty that's a first round pick I don't get it, guys. I don't get it. And this, to me, this is where my criticism of, of Rafael Stone. You got all these damn, you got seven first round picks on your right. We got so many picks, we rotate them in the G League. And to me, when you get to a certain point where you're rotating picks in the second and third year, they become bust. That means you wasted a pick. So they have to like, it's like almost they're juggling too much at the same time. The coaching staff is, the roster is, like you have too much going on. And uh, there's a lot of signs that I see that tells me that it's not, on purpose i know people assume everything is tank 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 i just think that a lot of stuff that they they suck at it and they're just kind of doing the best they can and it's showing up in a lot of different ways if you have national media because i listen i consume a lot of basketball podcasts they're confused about what we're doing local media is starting to be, be confused i mean i'm mean, i'm seeing locked on rockets one of the most um you know uh PC basically like try to play by the middle. Uh Jackson on there, he he getting he's starting to get a little spicy. So it can be are are we all crazy? It, is all the the people that cover the NBA around the you know the different analysts are they crazy? So y'all you know what I mean? It's to me like I said, if I walk like a dog and talk like a duck. Damn sure ain't no moose. Dan says to DJ, I just don't understand why the offense is run through Shangu more. I'll tell you, Dan, it's because that's not the MO of our coach. Joe Blue, uh, EF, he started slow, but he's picking it up. Uh, let me see. You don't uh, like Ty Ty and Bari? Yeah, I don't know about that. Let me find some. Let me see. Da, da, da. Let's see. Here's a good one. Will Pinto said, KPJ doesn't need to be the best playmaker. Look at the Nuggets. Silas needs to play through Shangun. I mean, hell, Jokic said that after the game. You got the MB, two-time MVP telling another coach, <laughs> another coaching staff, they should play through Shangun more, which is weird as hell if y'all think about that. Like literally in a press conference, another player saying what another team should do. But once again, are we all crazy? Is Jokic crazy? Is Jokic crazy, y'all? Is, is are we all just crazy? Is because sometimes I do find my like, are we? Am I going crazy? It's like I'm seeing this stuff with my eyes. You guys are seeing it. We all we've all watched a lot of basketball, but we just look at it and accept it. Like, oh, okay, they're tanking. I, like I said, I, I guess we're all just crazy. We're just going crazy. 
we all just going crazy and what we're seeing and all this stuff that's like, oh my God, this looks bad. Uh, it's just like, we just sweep it under the rug. But no, I think, yeah, like I said, it is what it is, man. All of this could be easily fixed next year. DJ Generation says, just shows how great MJ was. Some players can match some aspect of his game, but no one can be uh, can match his whole total game, match all aspects. Correct. MJ was the guy, man. He had so many different um, aspects of his game. Like he pointed out that he was elite at. And you don't just get to be the GOAT just by just scoring. You don't, you don't be the GOAT by just scoring. I mean, you got to think about the stamina. You got to think about the fact that this guy was able to play so many damn minutes in the season. You got to think about the fact that he was able to guard, to play offense and play defense, play into the playoffs, go to three straight straight championships. You know how tiring that is to play every round of the playoffs every single year and come back and still be the best player in the league? No wonder he had to take a break and came back and did it three more times. So, yeah, man, we, we you know, and to me, I'm going to go on a, let me go on a little tangent. You know what I'm tired of seeing? All these um, memes and tweets of, uh, oh, this player has joined uh, Michael Jordan and Akeem Olajuwon is the first rookie to, you know, LaMelo La Ball is the first rookie to have th a thousand three-pointers in this. Bro, like, the way the offenses are played in this era of basketball, especially for these guards, there is so much volume in their shots that, especially when it comes to three-pointers, there's a lot of three-pointer stats that you see all these young guys are, oh, he's the first guy till 20. Because back then, one, they weren't taking threes, and two, if you was 22, you ain't doing all that. Like, you're going to sit under somebody unless you just a number one player uh, coming out and you are clearly the best player on your team. Cause even back then, if you was a top pick, you still had some vets that you had to learn under. A lot of these stats are just based on just sheer volume. And when I see these statistics, when they're comparing guys in this era to previous eras, it's like, it's just cap. Like it's all just based on the fact that now a LaMelo ball can shoot 10 threes a game without getting yanked. If you did that stuff in 1995, you would have been riding the pine. So it's just, yeah, we got to keep context and all this stuff. Got to keep the context context of all these stats. Jalen takes a bunch of bad shots. I know he's confident that he can make them. Uh, we've seen him shoot, make shots like that before, but you can say the name, uh, same about Garrison Matthews. You got to improve his shot selection. Yeah, Jalen uh, is definitely taking some dumb shots. I think that's really his main issue is the shot selection that he has. Uh, DJ, the only player I've ever seen match any of MJ was Kobe. I ain't going to lie, LeBron got a little something to say about that, bro. You got to remember, LeBron was a all-defensive team player for a stretch of years um, and all that as well. So let's – Kobe, yes, Kobe matched him on all defense, uh, the offense of the championships, one short, and rest in peace to the great Kobe Bryant. Um, but definitely in the same cloth, MJ, Kobe, LeBron. Uh, KBJ is better uh, right now than Gary Payton-ish Smith. DeAnthony Melton, all PGs drafted by Rockets playing for other teams. I ain't going to lie. DeAnthony Melton is having a great season. Um, he's having a great season. He's playing point guard for Philly, guarding the other team's best guard, doing a damn good job of it, shooting good from three. Um, he's not KPJ on offense, but it's just what is playing better. You know what I mean? Once again, the just the sheer volume of the ability for him to take 15, 18 shots – I don't know what the Anthony Melton looks like if I told him you got the keys to the offense and he gets to go um, one for seven every other game and then have a 30 point game. I mean, it's the NBA. You know, some guys, if you just give them a bomb, they can do it. I think KPJ is a gifted isolation scorer and his catch and shoot ability is, is top notch. Um, but as far as better, is it better for the Rockets? That's the question we got to ask. Not whether he's better. Is he better for the Rockets than any other type of guard? Uh, Dan says the glove was one of the best at defense for his position. Yes, he was. Uh, DJ, yeah, Kobe was was Jordan Jr. Yes, sir. Uh, Usman could not create for himself. Now, nah, Usman is a offensive liability, and the stats are definitely showing that. Uh, says today's players wouldn't average as much in Jordan. No, they would not. No, they would not. Jalen Green would get punished for being frail in that era. Why can't we do something like the Nuggets think? I think our team would be running so effective uh, running through Shangun. You know, the Nuggets took time to get to Jokic, though. You know, that took a couple of years. I don't know if I talked to a Nuggets fan or they were saying when Jokic was, like, still coming up that they really weren't trying to go through him a lot either. So, um, 
you know, I don't know if Mike Malone was still the coach back then. Uh, but yeah, that 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 took some time before he got to where it was. Because you remember, Joker was like a second round pick, wasn't he? It wasn't like they thought he was going to be anything. Uh, EF says in that lineup, KJ Martin is a lob threat and a spot of shooter. Plus, he was hot tonight. You're talking about the lineups you named. Yeah, it's just the ball handling, bro. There's a lot of limitations in the ball handling with that lineup. Get go your Falcon was good, brother. He says Rockets don't have sense of direction. They're all over the place. They are uh and they're an and and buto to I'm guessing embarrassment to watch. This is inexcusable. Yeah, it is it's everywhere. The players are everywhere, they're up and down, like the Dow Jones. So King 00098 says, Do you think we'll see Gordon back at the starting five after bro? KJ had a 22 and 15 game. In one night, I think Gordon was out. And when Gordon came back, he had 14 minutes the next game. So, yeah, bro, come on. Yeah, we we, we definitely are going to see uh, Gordon come back and start. Will Pinto, he doesn't have a shot, to be honest. Rockets are too ass. The robot is stuck. Yeah, that dude, that robot be spazzing out, bro. He likes screaming at y'all. Can Jabari win the rookie year? Can Jabari? I guess nobody answered him. I think somebody answered him. Maybe it'll stop. Maybe it'll stop. Let's see. Bancaro is running away with the yeah he is man he is let me skip down a little bit get to some new conversations because i'm gonna shut this down at midnight uh let me go back to goyo's goyo said at ef hutton kbj is far from the top 15 point guard he is one of the worst point guards in the league uh worst Ah, i don't know that's hard to qualify if he's the worst because he's not bad it's just he's bad in certain moments and when he's doing certain things. Um, I don't know. I think he's probably not the worst point guard. I can't say that. There's probably worst point guards um, out there. Maybe the worst starter at point guard. I'm trying to think of a team with a bad starting point guard. Um, Lakers, they got Pat Beverly and who is their point guard? I don't, you know, LeBron, I guess. Um uh, Kings, Portland, yeah. Detroit, they got – is KBJ better than Cade and Ivy, would y'all say? Orlando? Is, eh, not after what we watch. Uh, your boy uh, – what's his name? Was was cooking this, man. I ain't going to lie. So I ain't going to say Orlando. Uh, but y'all let me know which teams you think have a worse point guard, starting point guard than the Rockets. I can't think of one right now. Um, just overall. Let's see. Will Pinto says he's arguably our best player. He only had 26 minutes. I think you're talking about Shane Goon. Uh, let's see. We go on to Merck. Merck One says, you were probably thinking about the first half lineup. Nick's Garrison, Tari Garuba, and KJ. Oh, my God. That, that is a nasty lineup. But there was a – was it? No, no. There was one with Bari that was bad. There was a Bari lineup with Bari – I think it was Bari, Tari, Garuba, KJ, and Nick's. Just a nasty lineup. Just a, just a nasty, nasty lineup. Nix is working overtime after practice with Silas one on one to get some extra minutes. Okay. Boy, Thurco says in the chat, click the dollar symbol near the bottom of the chat. If you're a member, you should be able to see the membership gifting option in the Dropbox. Yes, sir. You got to be on the computer to do it, though. Got to be on the computer. Let me skip down. Let me try to catch up to y'all. Uh, your boy Terry said, What up, Frank? Merry Christmas to the Chop Shop. Shout out, Terry, all the way from New Zealand, bro. What's good with you, brother? What's going on over there in your side of town? Let's see. We got uh, Dan says statistically KBJ hasn't improved much. Uh, since joining the team, he has improved. Since last year, he hasn't. I think he's actually regressing his stats from last year. He's having a worse season this year than he did last last season, uh, pretty much across the board. Um, leading the NBA in turnover, I think he's still – he might be second worst, I think, and beat at overtaking him. Um, but as far as guards, then yeah, he he's um he's his season is starting off rocky, and you know that could be a uh, sign of like I said, the team is just out there. It's just a buffet of what you want to do. Uh, Alexandra says bad IQ and bad decision making. Lex Shangun facilitate. He's our best player. Uh, I'm gonna skip down. EF Hudson says turnover assists not great, but 5.6 and 20 uh, points, five rebounds from a point guard is very good at year three. Yeah, but once again, I don't think he's a point guard. So um, that to me, that whole conversation is moved. We've talked about this like ad nauseum. So um, he's he's a 
He can be a secondary facilitator at this point in his career. There's nothing that indicates to me that he's going to ever going to develop into a point guard. Now, if you want to have him be initiate your offense, that's cool. But like the what we think of as a point guard, um, just even by name, the traditional sense, he hasn't shown any flashes of that. Can he be a lead ball handler for a team? Yes. My thing is, I don't think he can ever be a lead ball handler for a, a winning team because that's just not to me. That stuff is innate. Either you got it or you don't. Like it's like being a quarterback. You you got it or being a pitcher. You can throw, you can't. Uh, you can't teach some of that stuff. So I think in certain roles, um, as a a secondary like playmaker, a guy that spaces the floor that can guard uh, certain types of players, bigger guards, um, can uh, uh, isolate, attack closeouts in isolation, finish at the basket. He is a very talented player. And I think he's a really, really good basketball player. But what they're asking him to do, he is suffering right now um, in some of the aspects of it, especially the parts that has to do with the with the passing. DJ Denray, some basketball talk, Ram advice, billing advice, tech support. Yes, sir. You get it all here at the Chop Shop, your one-stop shop. We're going to start doing taxes in a, in a few. Uh, you know, we got taxes to come out. We're going to do your taxes live on stream. No, I'm playing. Uh, let me get down. Let me try to catch. I'm going to go down to... Let me go all the way to okay. This is the question I was asking about um uh, about the teams that have three the three uh the three three people three man. Uh let me get down. Guest man says Sack would give put him on a bag of chips. Okay, Golden State. So y'all say Golden State. We talked about the um we talked about uh Warriors with uh with um Clay, Steph, and Dre. So that's a three man combo. The Pelicans, I, I still I can't. I'm trying to think. It's got to be Zion, Bi, and uh, and CJ. But I haven't really seen them play off of each other like that. I've seen Zion and CJ play off of each other. I've seen Zion play off of Larry Nance. I haven't seen Zion and Bi play off of each other a lot. So I don't know if they got a, a three man combo there. The Cavs with Darius, um, with Darius and Donovan and Evan Mobley, I guess. I don't know. I don't see that. I don't see. And what I mean by three man combination is them playing off of each other. I've seen two variations of combinations, the two of them, not three. The Nuggets and the Kings. I haven't watched a lot of Kings games, but the ones I do see, they do have. Um, I know the Fox and and uh, and Sabonis thing is there, but y'all got to let me know who the third person is. Um, so I'm thinking of the Nuggets, Jokic. And Murray, definitely. Who's the third person? Michael Porter Jr. when he's back? I don't know, man. The three-man combo is dead in the NBA, it seems like. Except for Golden State Warriors. All right, let's see. Zion, Brent Ingram, CJ McCollum, ain't no joke. But they don't play off of each other. I guess y'all must have misunderstood. Embiid, Harden, and Maxi. Hmm, Neck Dead says that. That's a... I still feel like Maxi is like an odd man out in that because, okay, let me think. So that might be a close one because when Embiid and uh, Harden run a pick and roll, a lot of times if it's bottled up, they do kick it out to Maxi and he attack the closeout. But I don't know if it's if it's good enough to be a, a like a deadly combination. I think that's more of a bailout shot. Um, him and Harden really are still learning to mix with each other because I still feel like they just take turns doing whatever they're good at. Uh, for that get okay you got pesky al avocado <laughs> you got alvarado straight jacking people i've been watching the pels yeah the pels are a fun team to watch definitely a good team uh we'll call them avocado <laughs> all right let me skip down a little bit more got 10 more minutes let's go down this looks like a good comment i feel like silas is just this from watch the film i feel like silas is just a in and out coach he doesn't necessarily have the prototypical winner's mind or to be a blunt, have a championship textbook uh, game plan. Yeah, he ain't never really been around. The most winning he's been around is um, is the Mavericks. Uh, he's been in some losing uh, systems. So, you know, to me, that's always indicative of a certain thing. Like if I hire a coach, I need a guy that's been – I'm going to pick a guy off a of staff that's that's won some rings, which is weird, right? I don't know. You know, the Silas hire is a mystery to me. To me, even if you were trying to keep Russell Westbrook, why would you or James Harden? Why would you bring a rookie coach and say this is what? I don't know. Maybe they were they already knew what, what was up uh, the whole time. 
then if they did that, then they should have just traded Harden in the summer. But you know, that's a whole different story. Uh, I think Benedict Magnus from Guess Me. I think Benedict Mathurin is going to be better than Jalen Green next couple of years. That's a, that's a hot take in the Rockets uh, chat, bro. I ain't gonna cap. Um, I don't think so, uh, but I think Benedict's um, advantage is strictly his size, and that's Jalen's weakness. When when Jalen is that size, you you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. I think that's what it is. You'll be able to see that Benedict. He just has a grown body, and honestly, with Paolo and and Jabari, it's the same thing. Paolo has a well all around polished game than him, but what Jabari is going to do and be a lead at is stuff Paolo can't do, and vice versa. Um, but like I said, when Jabari gets his size, that those post ups he's going to have are going to be unguardable. When he can punish smaller dudes, he's still getting checked by smaller dudes right now. But when he gets to his, when he's big enough and muscular enough to be able to just keep his ground, keep his balance off his shots. He'll be punishing little dudes. Um, his defense, like y'all, like I said to start, you don't find a guy that's guarding uh, Giannis and Luka. That's a rare combination. That's a rare combination. So y'all just wait. You got to give, um, you got to let their bodies develop a little bit too before I can even judge them. Yeah, Jabari Smith is fire, bro. That dude is, um, once again, man, he has a really high upside. That's a guy, he, he could be uh, all defensive team next year. That could be a guy you have all defense player on your roster as soon as next year. League knows, man. This dude is checking up the best players in the league and doing a damn good job at it. You know what I mean? So, you know, that's really, really uh, impressive for a young guy. Bruno and Gruber are bad. We need another backup center. Yeah, Bruno's been on a down, 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 down trend. Uh, since he got hurt, um, he hasn't really been the same. So maybe he just never got injured. Apollo, Benedict, and three. Yeah, I agree. That's a good lineup. Uh, for the rookie of the year, given our cap space and draft capital, how important is this offseason to Stone? Everything. This is the this offseason is everything for Rafael Stone. Everything. This this because now they can't hide under we got a tank. So this to me this is a make or break for uh, him and Silas. Darrell Terrell, oh Doctor Terrell, what up Doc? Uh, T Will, delusional fans don't understand everything that requires strategy for the long term. It'd be ludicrous to try to make the playoffs with the powerful draft class like 23. We'd pick number 14 in 10 years again. Dr. T, I don't know if anybody said we should make the playoffs this year. If they did, let me know. Yeah, I think uh, everybody expects uh, the team to be bad. Uh, from what, what I've assessed, my point of view on the Rockets is that you don't just being bad doesn't excuse some of the decisions that you make and some of the, the things that we suck at. Not being able to attack a zone, for example, is an example of something. Because to me, if you're that bad, then even when you want to be good, you ain't going to be good. So that's why I said if they, if this team, not next year, not the year after that, play two or three years, they keep this current roster if they want to compete, um, unless they switch out half the guys for uh, for a bunch of vets. Right. Uh, Brandon Simpson said, Frank, could we run Garuba at the four with Shangun at center at times? Whoo, that's that's a lot of non-shooting, brother. I ain't gonna cap. That'll be interesting though. I wouldn't mind seeing it. I wouldn't mind seeing it. Uh Joe Blue says, let me see what Joe Blue Silas is Bill O'Brien 2.0 but basketball. I hope he doesn't leave the Rockets in the same shape. What if Fatita and Stone this is from Alexandra? Uh Alexandre or Alexander. I'm sorry, bro. What if Fertita and Stone went like Silas, man? We need to load, screw up the rota rotations. Then what? Then we're gonna fire you after your third year. I don't I don't I don't think I don't think that's what it is. O'Brien traded away all of our franchise players for nothing in return. Yeah, that's yeah, Silas doesn't have that power, thank God. Uh, J Mon says, You think they were playing Knicks and Matthews to improve their value for a trade, which would open up for Christopher? <laughs> Bro, what team in the NBA is looking at Knicks and Matthews and saying, hmm. I don't know. I'm really on the bubble about signing this guy. Let me see what he looks like. Like, bro, there is those dudes aren't. Remember, Matthews wasn't in the NBA when we signed him. The Knicks was undrafted in the G League. So I do not think there's any teams that they can trade. If they trade them, they're going to be waived as soon as they land on the other team. Because they're just salary filler. They're just salary. They're, they're going to be waived. I don't think there's anybody that's like, 
Oh, yeah, man. Damn, I, I'm on the bubble about signing this Matthews kid. My God never hated someone so much in my life after that garbage hopping. Yeah, bro, that Bill O'Brien. Bill O'Brien, ah, don't, don't bring up the Texans, bro. I'm, I can't. I can imagine a triangle offense with J.J. Shangun and Jabari. I swear they need to have tra uh, traded Gordon like yesterday. Hope Gordon is out to start in lineup. I feel like this is the year for Gordon, bro. I think they're going to trade him this season. This is – it just feels like it. Um, and, yeah, uh, B. Simpson says, Stone got to hang them nuts after this year. If I was Tillman, I'd be getting rid of Stone and Silas. I'm telling y'all, man, this offseason is going to be big for them. It's going to be big for them. It's going to be – you know what I mean? If they don't hit – and put together a common roster, then there's no excuse at that point. Yeah, uh, Swaggy says, Benny, they got an NBA body. I would not take him over Bari. We haven't seen Bari. Man, if y'all arguing Benny the Mathern over Jabari Smith, move around, brother. That's not even close. The Pacers would drool over Jabari Smith, over Benny the Mathern. I can give me a bucket any day. You give me a guy that can guard Giannis and Luka, now we, we talking about building a championship team. You feel me? Not just an exciting team, bro. We got we got a piece. We got a piece. At baseline, Jabari Smith is going to be able to play on any team in the NBA as a starter. At baseline, just as a 3 and D wing. If you just say, Jabari, we just want you to shoot these threes when Luka or or, or um, when Luka or, or John Morant kick out to you, and I want you to guard Giannis. Today, you're going to guard uh, Brandon Ingram. Next game, you guard Luka. That's your assignment. That dude is going to make himself a lot of money. Just that's at baseline right now. If he just developed just as a regular three and D player, he's already going to be one of the best three and D wings in the NBA just from his body type. So, yeah, I do not want Benedict Mather and over Jabari. Never. I don't give a damn how many uh, 30 point games he has. Is there any sense to develop three centers at the same time or three point guards? Um, I mean, you can, but it's just like, what does develop mean? You feel me? When they're just, Kind of out there just running around. That's what it'd be looking like sometimes. Guess man says, man, I got tons of Jalen Green. Uh, I got gold prism, and it's not looking too well. <clears throat> okay. I don't know what the RC stands for. Are you talking to somebody? But, yeah, Jalen's still a baby, man. Y'all got to let that man develop. Aaron Gordon looks nice with Jokic. He does. Aaron Gordon is a great player that plays off of Jokic. Okay, here's a three-man lineup. Somebody threw out. Holiday, Middleton, Giannis. They don't play off each other. I ain't going to cap. I ain't going to cap. Middleton is, uh, when he gets in his bag, it's really an awesome isolation tip. Holiday runs some pick and roll, but he's an ISO kind of down hunting. Giannis is just a bulldozer. When I mean three man is playing off of each other, like mostly in trying, because the Warriors run a, a triangle uh, type of offense. So I guess you got to be in a certain system because the Bucks run a lot of, um, they do run some like, screen actions and pick and rolls and a lot of just isolation drive and kick with Giannis and, and Drew. But um, I guess that three-man combo, like what the Lakers did, you got to have the triangle concepts in there because it activates the post player and then all the movement out of the post. And then you can really get fancy with it. But to me, the triangle is the dynasty type of offense. All the dynasties run a triangle, Spurs, Warriors, Bulls, Lakers, triangle, 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 triangle. They have the concepts of the triangle in there because it is a it's, a, it's a great offense, especially when you got the players to do it. Let me see. Jalen is about to get trolled like Bron because he is, he is, can be that good. And most people know it. Yeah. I mean, I'm not tripping on Jalen, bro. Y'all, y'all, I mean, that's damn it. Frank skip down ghost like his tea. What you sipping on? Oh man, I, I don't the 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 skip down. Oh okay, 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 okay. I'm going too slow. Is that what you're saying, B? Let me see. I disagree with your takes, guess man. I'm taking Jalen over and Barry over Benedict. Yeah, I ain't gonna cap. I like Benedict Mac Matherin, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm gonna stick with our guys. I think they have a higher upside than him. Um, yeah, I just think so. I'm sorry because Jalen is. The athleticism is, is what gets it for me. And the the skill, I mean, y'all saw that layup? I mean, that was a sick layup. I haven't seen a rookie average 18 points off the bench for a long time, Swaggy. I mean, then, um, oh, what's his name? The dude that won rookie of the year. He averaged like 20 points a game that we never heard from him. Oh, man, y'all know who I'm talking about. But, I mean, it's you got to do it a couple years in a row before we know it's real. 
Uh, guess he's good, but Green will be better. I also agree with that. I'm not trying to be a homer. I just think Green is better, and I think most people in the NBA know that. Jabari is going to be a beast. Him uh, and Paolo, five years from now, will be one and two. Yeah, that's going to be a fun matchup to watch. Uh, let's see. I'm going to do a couple more. Who's the last rookie average 18 and 25 minutes a game? Paolo, Jane, and Jabari are playing close to 35 minutes a game. That's true. Guess man got a point. Uh, would you trade Eric Gordon for Cam? Yes. I'm even going to read the rest of the sentence. If not, would you? Uh, con would, what young contributor that fits our timeline would you want to trade for? I'll trade Eric Gordon for anybody. That's uh, basically you, right now in his, in his position, he's playing the small forward. We need more out of that position. What K.J. Martin provides is, is perfectly fine. If you can get a Cam Reddish, uh, a 6'8 wing that is uh, supposed to be a good shooter, um, we know Tom Thibodeau doesn't like rookies or young guys. We know um, he probably didn't want the trade to happen, but they were there anyway. There were rumors that he was forced to play Cam Reddish even a little bit. You know, I don't know if, if uh, Coach Silas is the right coach for a Cam Reddish, but um, I would love to take a flyer on Cam Reddish because I feel like he fits our timeline. He's a position of need, which is a wing that can play defense, some defense. He's long, he's athletic, he can shoot. Put him on there. Replace him with Eric Gordon. You get a, a, a you know, Jalen, Kevin Porter, Cam Reddish, Jabari, and Shangoon. And to me, you know, that's a better lineup. Just off of just athleticism and pace. Uh, that's a better lineup. Matthews looks like a guy just came out of jail <laughs> rather than a basketball player. Yeah, bro, I ain't going to lie. Matthews, he he uh, he just got to hit his shots. Like When he's not hitting, I want him out the game because he's not doing much else. Let me see. It says the Bulls were running three man before Lonzo got hurt. Lonzo, DeRozan, Levine. I didn't really watch the Bulls, so I can't even really, really argue that point. Rogue Autumn says it seems like Stone chooses who he wants on the team. And Silas is a yes man. Is that their relationship? Wouldn't it be better if the dynamic were the other way around? Rogue, I'm a, that's a great point because most of the time when coaches come, they get to pick their entire staff off rip. So I, I've never really seen where a coach gets a staff pick for him which tells me all I need to know about Coach Silas. He was just happy to get the job. Um, he doesn't – it didn't seem like they really trusted him with the full autonomy to make his own selections, which is – you know what I mean? It is what it is. And then there were rumors about Stone being at their practices and talking to the players during practice, which is a big no-no in the NBA. So it's a lot of weird stuff. It's a lot of weird stuff. It seems like there's a dynamic there where Coach Silas is still just uh, – like you said, he's just there. He's just there to execute what the teams want. I don't know if a lot of real, like if it was like, if it was, uh, let's say we did hire uh, Jeff Van Gundy. I can't imagine a world where Jeff Van Gundy would not pick his own staff because he has that cachet. He's a veteran coach as well-respected around the NBA. I can't imagine a world where he would go into a, a season, even as a tanking team that no, understands they need to rebuild to not have a roster built that's functional, to not have a, a you know, a, a real backcourt or a, a backup point guard at least that could run some of the sets that he wants to run. Because at the end of the day, no matter what the goals of the team are, as a coach, what happens with the team is on your resume. And right now, Silas is sitting on having one of the worst coaching career starts in NBA history. So that's what he's sitting on. That's not a, a good thing to put on your – I don't give a damn what the team says. Because what the team's going to do is when they get tired, they're going to fire him. So that's a weird dynamic there. Uh, but I think regardless of what happens with Coach Silas, he's going to be okay. Um, because um, obviously he has a lot of connections in the NBA. He can always go back to um, Indiana and be the uh, assistant coach with Rick Carlisle, back to his old stomping grounds. Maybe Dallas hires him to work with Luca again. Uh, maybe he can go um, to Charlotte um, with their coach, which was like a mentor to him. Obviously he's been around the league, different organizations that respect his offensive mind. The head coaching thing sometimes is not for everybody, and sometimes it takes a couple of swings of the – uh, took a, a couple of bites of the apple to be able to get it. We've seen a lot of coaches come out their first go round and they they were trash. They got to learn under somebody else for longer times, re relish, uh, remember their experience, then came back around like your JB Bickerstaffs and things like that. So it's normal. It's part of the progression. Just like players, coaches need to develop. So he just needs to develop. Uh, let's see. We'll do a couple more. Any player we get just takes minutes from uh, players or adds wins either way I'm out unless it's to help EG into a better situation. 
No, that's not true because remember the tanking things to develop players. I think you can bring players to develop. I think we need a back, a real backup point guard just for Jabari Smith Jr. Just for him, like just for him. I want to see Jabari play with a, a guard that knows how to manipulate the defense and find him and, and use the defense and their playmaking ability to get him open shots. Then he might have opportunity to be in the rookie of the year race. This is the thing about development. It's not in a vacuum. Jalen can develop on his own by himself. Shangun can develop on his own by himself. KPJ can develop on his own by himself. They are relying on each other. Coach Silas can develop as a coach by himself. So when you have all these novices trying to do something against uh, in a league that's it's one of the most competitive leagues in the world, you're facing off literally every game. You look across on the bench, it's a Hall of Fame coach. You're facing off Hall of Fame players. You're facing off Hall of Fame GMs and front offices. We are losing, probably lost every battle on all three. On most nights in the NBA, the Rockets are going to be uh, underdogs in the on the court, on the bench, and in the front office. So this is the uphill battle that the team is trying to fight. And so it's not just in a vacuum. All of this stuff, is, is it touches each other. That's why when you're trying to develop a Kevin Porter Jr., it's going to impact other players on the team. That's why when you're trying to bring in a keeper Aragorn on the roster, it impacts players down the line. It forces you to have to send a um, send a Jacob to the G League. All this stuff is not unrelated, and it has ripple effects over the rebuild. So when you're looking at this from the outside, you can see like, okay, that's going to be problematic. The analogy I like to use for the point guard situation is like having a – receiver that you turn into a quarterback right like use the saints with Taysom hill you turn a, a dude that's a receiver into a quarterback cool it was cool when your main quarterback was out and he retired now you have this guy that's exciting everybody loves him that's your kevin porter jr he's a receiver at by nature but he can throw he got a good arm so you want to put him at quarterback but he's not making all his passes and he always throws interceptions there was a lot of picks. It's cool for the first year. Then all of a sudden, you draft the all-world wide receiver. And this wide receiver is like, you know, the guy, he's a top pick. He can do everything at wide receiver. But you insist on keeping this quarterback that is a receiver. And your wide receiver that's all-world is out there running routes and getting no balls thrown his way because they're all picks or they're hitting the dirt. So this wide receiver does not get – any chance to be a rookie of the year. He doesn't know what it's like to win games. He doesn't know what it's like to make big catches. He doesn't know what it's like to, whether his routes are working right. Then the next year you draft the all world tight end. So now you have a tight end and a wide receiver with a quarterback that used to play receiver that can't throw. At some point you got to be able to say enough is enough with that. And that's really where I think a lot of the fan base is at. And a lot of the, the fans are at because as much as you want to develop one player, when you're at that point guard position, your job is to make everybody else around you better. And if you're not able to develop in a certain timeline that allows your skills to match up, especially as you're adding more talent, then you're impacting the whole team. So I think that's where the Rockets are at. I think that's where the Rockets are right now. It's impacting the entire team. And they that's why I said just bring in a backup. Hell, just bring in somebody to play scout team uh, so maybe Barry can get some looks uh, during scout team. All right, let me see. I'm going to do one more. Let me see. Let's see. <clears throat> let me do one more. Okay, we're going to pick Ari Shabani. I think we should give Tata more minutes and see what he got. And it's looking like he's going to take Nick's minutes. We'll see. That's that's the hope. Tata got it. You know, he got to be able to step up. He got to be able to do it. It's on him. Tata got to be the person like he plays way too passively uh, for me. Like if you know that your competition is Nick's, we know Nick's ain't shy. He think he Dame Lillard. I've seen Nick's look off Jalen in the closing minutes of a game of a quarter and, uh, and take a three pointer that was like it almost hit a fan. So Tata, he has to be more aggressive or he's not going to get playing time because he slows down the offense. Our offense is so guard-centric <clears throat> that he has to be more aggressive. So when he's not being aggressive, 
it really kind of messes up the offense. So he has to be able to see that. So, but I think he'll, he he should um, pick up his confidence as time goes on, because like I said, the skill set is there. If y'all watch him play, he paces everything just right. His head is always up in, in transition. When he gets into the paint, he's not rushing. <clears throat> he does that little dribble that Chris Paul does where he gets the guy on his hip and is like reading the defense, waiting for the actions to evolve. So he's never in a rush. So that's what you want to see from him. But with that, I'm going to go ahead and close this off. I'm about to lose my damn voice messing with y'all. Appreciate everybody for coming out, uh, rocking with the Chop Shop. <clears throat> we got a couple videos dropping uh, probably either tomorrow or we'll try to drop some before Christmas for sure for y'all to rock with. If y'all like this video, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed already. And keep rocking with the Chop Shop. And, uh, you know, the Rockets, we just going to keep, you know, coming out and talking about it, hopefully. We'll be able to get some wins. We're on a five-game losing streak. Not great, but we'll see what the new year has for us. But happy holidays to everybody. I'm going to see you all on the flip side.